Alright, hey everybody, welcome to episode 34 of the Stop and Give Me 20 podcast. 20 minutes with some of the world's top fitness professionals. I'm your host, Anthony Rennie. You can check out the show notes at stop20podcast.com. That's stop20podcast.com. Make sure you go to iTunes, subscribe to the show, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Make sure you leave us a rating and a review. All right, for today's episode, I have on Mark Fitzgerald, and Mark is in his second season as the strength and conditioning coach for the Anaheim Ducks. Before that, he was the head of performance and nutrition for the Canadian Hockey League, which is the world's largest development hockey league. He's also part of the Under Armour Global brand, and he's the owner and director of Elite Training Systems uh, in Whitby. That's their main location with a couple other locations. Coach, thanks for coming on. Oh, great to uh, great to be on, Anthony. Thanks for inviting me. All right, with this uh, resume, I don't know like when you had time to do this. So <laughs> um, I'm at the rink waiting for the game to start. So there you go, um, coach. Let's get right into it. Uh, what's your story? What's that spark that you know got you into your early fitness lifestyle? You know what? I think uh, I'm lucky. A lot of it was from my my siblings. I have two older brothers, um, really close to the uh, the middle guy, and I remember I still. To this day, I remember him bringing me to the uh, the little storage closet of a gym that we used to go to, and you know he he put a 45 bar on the bench press. And he's like, "Give it a shot," and I pinned myself harder than I've ever pinned myself before. And he said, "You know, hey, that's that's lifting. You know, it's hard and it's uh, you know it's it's not easy and it's but it's worthwhile and it's something that we bonded over and you know continue to bond over and." Uh, the payback has has come around though, because he's a um, he's a firefighter. So I end up training him and his uh, his uh, coworkers or whatever for the fire fit challenges. So I've got him back, but he's definitely the one that uh, or one of the ones that influenced me heavily. And you know, after that, I started playing football and you know all those other things. But definitely, it was him that uh, introduced me to the weight room and the iron and and how how beneficial it could be. Very cool. How old were you when that happened? I was in grade eight. So you know. 13 years old yeah yeah did you guys i mean was it kind of typical meatheady type stuff that at that time you know like just like doing a big lift oh straight meathead like it was uh you know military press bench press decline press you know leg day squats more squats leg press all that good stuff uh i wouldn't say i i didn't not that i didn't learn a lot but it was just more of the the raw basics you know what i mean yeah, was he? Did he give you any resistance when you started to kind of turn it around and be like, no, 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 you're doing it all wrong here. And he's your older brother, so. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It was. Uh, it wasn't until after university that he started listening to me, and realizing that hey, you know, maybe I should, uh, maybe he should listen to me a little bit more and pay attention to what I'm doing. And then as soon as he did, it was, uh, you know, he obviously saw the benefit, and he was he's one of my biggest supporters. So it was, it was. Uh, he, he's a great man, so it was it was an easy thing for him to support me. But uh, the payback sessions are still ongoing. Nice, nice. <laughs> uh, Mark, growing up, who was that person that kind of really influenced? Obviously, your brother got you into the into the weights, and he he certainly could be that superhero growing up. So who who was that person? Yeah, that's a tough one. I, I was thinking about that one quite a bit. It's it's. Uh, I think my brother was definitely one of them. I, I think. And this is probably a bad answer, but the athlete, you know, I was such a sports kid. I'd come home from school and it was, you know, what sport am I going to play until my parents dragged me off the street? And for me, it was I could never focus on one. It was hockey when it was hockey season. It was baseball when it was baseball season, football, what have you. And it was just I think the idea of the athlete was always something that uh, uh, drove me or, or, or what have you. And that's still to this day. I think it's, you know, you want to be fit. You want to be healthy. You want to be a leader. And you know, all those things. And I, I think, you know, not to take anything away from my brother, but it's, yeah, I think he probably started that in me. And then the more I was put myself in sports and what have you, it was always uh, aspiring to be that whatever, whoever it was, whoever filled in for that season of, uh, in sport, it was the athlete. Very cool. Yeah. I could always remember growing up, you know, being a hockey, a huge hockey fan. And I, you know, just if I ever saw one of those guys, I saw Mike Bossy after a game one time, it's like 1980, and and he was smoking, and I like couldn't believe it, man. I was like, 
no way no it's, yeah. it's impossible how'd that happen <laughs> yeah you know what we were my parents had uh you know got access to some blue jay tickets back in the day so you know getting to see those guys up close and i was a huge baseball kid there's hockey as well obviously but baseball was big so i like you know mark mcguire and the oakland a's when they were the bash brothers and all that kind of stuff but i i don't think i ever really singled in on one athlete i think it was just the idea of their life and their you know not necessarily the fame just kind of all the other little things that went along with it you know being fit being a leader being being the guy you know what i mean yeah absolutely um what about now? Who's anyone out there? Uh, I know you're exposed to a lot of great people, a lot of great leaders as well, and you're doing so many things. Uh, anyone out there who you're looking up to that's doing some great things right now? Yeah, you know what? I think this, uh, again, these are tough questions because there's so many answers that I would probably have if it was, uh, you know, more time or whatever. But um, I think, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger's always been somebody who his story and his, I don't know, just the way that he continues to do things and, and nobody's perfect and you know everybody has their uh, uh, you know their, their skeletons in the closet or whatever but I don't know I feel like he's just you know he's always got that fitness and health side of it whether it's you know the bodybuilding stuff or the Arnold that just took place there not that long ago I don't know I feel like he's got his hands in a lot of things and you hear him talk on podcasts and stuff and he's just his story is just incredible and the fact that he's still you know contributing to the charities that he is and um, you know, still kind of being a leader, even though he's kind of out of the out of office or what have you. Now, I just I don't know. I just I like his story, and I like uh, how he continues to kind of live his life. And I think it's something that um, goes probably more unnoticed than maybe it should. I don't know maybe because of his fame and the movies and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I think he's just somebody that's just doing some cool things and and continuing to contribute. Very cool. I think one of the one of the things about him too is how he's kind of reinvented himself a couple of times to really rise to yeah you know like best in the world that you know whether it was bodybuilding or movies or or being a politician and pretty interesting how somebody can kind of keep reinventing themselves and when you hear him talk too it's just like his attitude and his how he looks at things it's just like you aspire to want to think like that i know at least i do it's just you know he's just kicking ass and that's yeah you know it's you hear him talk and it's like yeah yeah, that's, he's like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to be the best, and he does it. And I'm making it sound easy, and obviously it's not, but it's, I don't know, I just, I like, you know, that kind of mentality is empowering. Absolutely. Uh, what about you? What about, uh, I mean, you know, you have the gym, you have the ducks, you have your son, obviously, I mean, we know you want to be a superhero to him. Um, wh- who are you trying to be a superhero with your message and with what you're doing? Uh you know, I think first and foremost, it's it's athletes because you know they're fortunately what gives me a a chance to put food on my table, and you know, and and working with them to get the best out of them and help them have long careers and all that kind of stuff. And I think that's kind of an obvious answer, but I think more than anything, it's it's coaches, it's strength and conditioning coaches because I mean, you know, having the gyms and you know having staffs and young people that are working for me and you know looking for me looking to me for leadership and what have you is is such a cool opportunity to you know help them along in their careers and um hopefully avoid some mistakes um put them in positions that maybe they wouldn't have gotten without uh, you know working with me or what have you which you know speaking and stuff like that um you know and i think that's i think that's such a cool and um important opportunity that i have is to you know pass along experiences that i've had and mistakes and all those kinds of things and and to help make good coaches and um i get more like almost daily now from young coaches looking for advice and you know looking for help which is i love and i I answer all of them and you know look to help in any way that i possibly can Uh, just like guys helped me when i was that age and looking for opportunities um and they're all looking for you know either it's business owners or you know uh coaches looking to get into the nhl how do i do it they're all looking for that magic a lot of them are looking for that magic answer or that you know the secret that i have and it's like sorry man i don't there's no secrets it's (laughs) it's a lot of you know perseverance it's a lot of um opportunities it's a lot of people opening doors what have you but i think i think coaches is probably my definitely one of my passions is just you know growing that side and, and helping to contribute to good coaching and making sure that people are being successful 
Cool. Is there any, you know, uh, staying, staying on that line, is there anything that you feel, I mean, I know, uh, you know, right now you're part of the Under Armour global brand and you have, uh, you know, when you, when you say you want to do that, obviously you want to reach out even to even farther than, than the coaches at, at Elite, at ETS, and, and, you know, you have Whippy and you have a couple of locations. Uh, anything else planned to kind of try to stay in that realm of, like, how do I help more coaches? Well, funny you say that, and we didn't talk about this, but yes, I'm starting my own um, site that'll be up probably in the next month or so, markfitzgeraldstrength.com. And uh, I'm not trying to plug it, but you did ask. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, so that'll that'll be a lot of um, you know, coach um, and business related. You know, and, and trying to really um, put good information out there about coaching development, about um, you know, you know, obviously a little bit about my path and who I work with and and what I'm doing. But a lot of it'll be coaching development, and I'm gonna you know, hopefully from that we've we've put together some you know, mastermind opportunities and. Um, small group coaching and and hopefully some in-person stuff as we kind of move forward and um, really excited about it and it, it, again it's still in that uh, early stages but it's something that I feel like is is gonna when I when I put some more of the time into it when I do have the time it, it's gonna be something I'm gonna be really passionate about because it's I think it's needed you know and I think that's it's still something that like I said about the emails and and reaching out that I get is the the advice that a lot of these young coaches need it's it's not the crazy complicated stuff it's the keep doing what you're doing or it's the put yourself out there more or you know what i mean it's those little tidbits of advice that are so important but sometimes you just need to hear it from a different voice and uh, i think that you know the site's going to be uh, uh, largely dedicated to that is coaching development and and, and help make, helping young coaches old coaches whoever grow their business grow themselves all that kind of stuff very cool um, yeah, we, and we do need it and there's, there is plenty of room for it and there's, there's a lot of garbage out there. So, um, yeah. to be, uh, getting advice from somebody like yourself who has been in it for a long time. Uh, one thing you're probably going to battle with is, uh, people just thinking all you know about is hockey, right? <laughs> well, yeah, you know, it's funny cause I get that a lot. Obviously, Hey, I, I work in hockey while well, I'm Canadian. So, I mean, um, we're, we're growing up skating and, and playing at it almost immediately so yeah i mean i work in hockey but I, i'm not a hockey player you know I, if you want to count my monday night shinny at ets as hockey player i don't i don't know about <laughs> that you probably disagree if you saw us play um but i played football i played football i played lacrosse i really i stopped playing hockey in high school because i was playing football so i mean my hockey experience isn't really you know uh, that great a depth so I mean I'm not a hockey guy it, I'm more of a football and track background that's where I learned probably the most amount was in you know in university we had some great track coaches that you know destroyed us in the football off season, and that's where I really fell in love with the, you know the coaching side of it and learning about strength and conditioning and nutrition and all that kind of stuff so really my experience was more derived in, in football and in that realm yeah um, you know and I still work with some football players um, now, not not a ton of them, but work with a couple of NFL guys, and it's I love it because that's really where. Not that I don't love hockey, but yeah. you know that's that's the sport that I played, so that's the sport I feel attached to. You know, absolutely good stuff, Mark. Actually, let's stay along this line. Um, what are you know coaches ask you that about about this idea about the magic formula? But what are some of the habits that have kind of uh, I'm kind of big on habits right now, especially just mm-hmm. with some of the things I'm like reading and listening to. But what are some of the habits that helped you become who you are and where and get to where you are? Uh, you know what? I think one of the things that a lot of the coaches say is, you know, what certification, what course can I take, you know, to put those extra little letters behind my name and and what what's what's going to help propel me? And I had a young guy just the other day ask that exact question, you know, and he was USA weightlifting. He was he had enough in my opinion, you know, at, at, for his, for in this obviously specific to him, but in my opinion, he had kind of filled that bucket enough uh, at, at his point in time. And I said, you need to get yourself some hands-on experience, you know, and I think, you know, years ago it was, you know, only be good at one thing. You know, I, I even remember thinking that, like, do one thing, do it really well. And now I don't think that applies. I really don't. I, I think you have to be multi-talented. And I think, you have to be, you know, not jack of all trades. That's that's 
definitely not what I'm saying, but you definitely have to be a little more well-rounded nowadays. You know, there's so many experts and there's so many gurus out there that, you know, to, to, you know, back yourself up a little bit and be well-rounded. And that doesn't just mean training and nutrition stuff. That means business development. That means, you know, networking, being social, um, all those things. Cause it, you know, I'm, I'm not the, the smartest guy in the world. I'm not, I'm not the X's and O's coach. Like, you know, like, like we, you and I both know those guys. I feel like I'm, I'm a better communicator. I'm a, I'm a good, uh, relationship builder. I can, you know, I think my, one of my talents would be getting my athletes trust. And I mean, once you have that trust, you know, as long as you know what you're doing on the X's and O's, then you're going to be probably pretty successful, you know, but I, I've met these coaches that, you know, can't go have a beer with a fellow coach because they just can't, you know, they don't know how to be around in a social setting, you know, and that's, as you and I both know, that's important. Absolutely. You better be able to just, you know, take the coaching hat off and be yourself and, and have some good conversations with people and network. And, you know, that was definitely one of the things. And it seems to be a bigger theme, you know, and whenever people ask me what books I'm reading and all that kind of stuff, it's it surprises them because, you know, yeah, I do my technical reading like like every like we all should and whatever. But a lot of mine, especially now, is geared towards business development and leadership and you know, just thinking outside the box a little bit and uh, where I want to, you know, life course stuff and whatever. And I think a lot of young coaches and even older coaches just get mired in programming and periodization. It's like, come on, like it's it. There's more to it. There's way more to it. You know, I had three athletes this summer getting married and going to their weddings. Like that's that's what it's about. Yeah. You know, and and that's what gets you going because you know, you're getting to guide these young people, you know, through their lives, you know, and I'm fortunate that I've had some of my clients for, you know, the junior career, pro career, now they're done and they're still training. And one of them just got engaged the other night, you know, and that's, that's awesome. That's yeah. what it's about. You know, I don't, I don't care how much he front squats. It's, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it's the fact that he had a good career and he's healthy and he's fit. And now he's moving into a big part of his life, you know, and that's, I don't know. I think there should be more of a focus on that as opposed to putting another letter and, you know, yeah. breathing course beside your name. Absolutely. Well, um, let's let's really quickly, I want to go, you mentioned books. What was the last book you've been, or book you're currently reading? And just give us a quick takeaway on that. Um, last book was Tools of Titans. Um, I'm still not done all of it because it's a very thick book. Yeah. Um, but again, it's just outside of, I listen to Ferris podcast quite a bit. Some of them are a little bit long, but, um, you know, for me, it's, it's just a different way of, you know, seeing what the best people in the world do and how they do it. You know, the routines, their habits, the fitness, the, you know, seeing which things are common across the board and what things that I need to kind of spend, you know, pay attention to, you know, I, I check the box of lifting weights and, you know, eating properly, but yeah. You know, my check in the box on meditation and, you know, um, appreciation of people in my life and stuff like that. You know, I think that's it's it's one that all coaches should read. All right. Good stuff. All right, Mark. Now it's time for the stop and give me five segment, five rapid fire questions and answers. You ready for this? I'm ready, man. I'm ready. All right. Favorite arena to travel to? <clears throat> uh, I would say probably Montreal. Just for the history and what have you. Uh, side note: uh, As a kid, what was your who was your team? Oh, uh, Leafs for I sure. Was I mean, say, yeah, I was, yeah, I was thirty shot. minutes from Maple Leaf Garden. Right, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you could have been in any movie, what would it have been? Uh, the program, hundred percent. That's we watched it during high school football playoffs. I don't know if you remember that movie, but it's just I love every minute of it. Nice uh, lunch with anyone from the past. Who is it? You know what? That's a really tough one for me. I, I cannot, if, I cannot really think about you know other than some family members that I never really got to meet. My my dad's dad, my grandfather, uh, you know, raised nine kids, poor. I don't know. I just I feel like someone in my family that I never got to spend a lot of time with. I'm Irish, so our entire family lives over there. So uh, yeah, I think that would be cool. Yeah, nice. Uh, biggest adjustment where you're, you know, you're in year two now. So mm -hmm. last year, kind of like maybe the biggest surprise or biggest adjustment working in the NHL. I think just the, the travel, you know, and, and really 
if you if you ignore the travel and you're not you know taking it into account enough it, it'll it'll shorten your season pretty fast and and even personally too like you have to if you're not eating properly as even as a coach if you're not eating properly and taking care of yourself the, the road will chew you up and spit you out yeah especially where you are with all the travel on the west coast um mm. all right you can pick any trainer to come to ets uh, anybody from the past who knows, you know, could be Arnold, could be anybody. Uh, who, who would, who do you have trained you for for the day? Oh, uh, that's a lot. That's a tough one too. Um, you know what? I, I I've sat in through a bunch of Dan John uh, lectures and what have you. He just seems like my kind of guy. Just pick up some heavy stuff and walk with it and whatever. I think it'd be cool to have a session from him. All right, very cool. Um, all right, we're winding down. Uh, give me uh, the project you're working on that's kind of getting you really excited. Uh, you know what? I, th- I think you know my own website and and uh, you know all this all the things that I'm going to do out of there. Um, the Under Armour thing is is really exciting, as you mentioned already. Is uh, you know I've been with Under Armour now for ten years in Canada, and that you know I'm still continuing that role, but now they've kind of expanded it to this this globally, which there's a team of about ten of us and. Um, I'm really excited for that because we've got a guy in charge of it uh, who's who's just a you know one of those guys you want to be around you know and he's somebody that uh, is is going to do some good things and I think uh, you know there's a bright future on that side. All right, love it, uh, Mark. What's the uh, letter to your younger self? What advice are you going to give uh, give yourself? Uh, you know what? Start now. Stop waiting. Stop putting things off. Um, imperfect action is better than no action. Uh, I was a kid that was always, you know, not a kid, but as a young guy, I was afraid of getting up in front of the room and, you know, saying my piece. Whereas now I obviously don't have that same problem. But, uh, you know, I think it would be give myself a kick in the ass and just say, hey, get up and do it. You know, failing's okay. Um, you know, but start now. Stop aiming and start shooting. Love it. Uh, what is the Gretzky quote? Uh, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Well, um, I'm really glad that you're going to be uh, kind of putting yourself out there a little bit more and looking forward to this website um, because we need more coaches like you kind of spreading the word. So uh, we really appreciate you uh, coming on today. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. It's a great show. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I listen to everyone. All right, well, uh, we got you uh, tomorrow, and for all you listen out there, Mark's going to be on the Shrank Coach podcast next episode as well. So, uh, again, yeah. Mark, thanks for coming on. <laughs> thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right, well, that's going to do it for episode 34 of the Stop and Give Me 20 podcast. Thanks again to Mark Fitzgerald. Make sure to check out all the links to all his stuff at t- stop20podcast.com. Don't forget, subscribe to the show, leave us a review and a rating. My name's Anthony Renna. Thanks so much for stopping by.